Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. I'm here joined by Mr. Costa Duke, the Core Contributor of Forest, and Ms. Laura Lee, the CMO of Litex. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so let's start with an easy one. Would you care to give an introduction about yourselves and your company and your role at the company? Yep. Uh, so I'm from Litex. Litex is a layer two project, and we are focused on applying layer two technology in the fields of dev games and crypto payments. And I'm CMO of Litex. Mm -hmm. And you, Costa? Uh, my name is uh, Costa Dio. I am a co-contributor for the Forest Blockchain project. And uh, actually, we are launching the first system based on Mimble Wimble plus DG protocol for daily payments. <laughs> yes, it's a very long name indeed. But we do that sort of thing. And we do develop and design a whole solution for daily payments for ATMs, for merchants, for e-commerce, and right. my role is to be a voice of our community <laughs> and to deliver a message to the publicity. Now, what's the story behind the name Forest? It's, it's an odd name for a blockchain project, so... Yes and no, it's because, uh, listen, it's not just the forest, it's the forbidden forest. Okay. <laughs> Do you know uh, the story about Harry Potter? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. They had this oh, sort of Potter, forest. Right, yeah, right, right, right. yeah, yeah. The story came from this part of a very nice story mm -hmm. about Harry Potter. And they had uh, their own forbidden forest. And the beauty of everything, because we are at Forest, we are developing the high efficient and high privacy and security blockchain for daily payments. It's like cash, mm -hmm. but for much faster. Mm -hmm. It's like real cross-border payments but right. much more efficient with the privacy when you pay your cash nobody knows what's going on nobody knows who you are and almost impossible to find who you self you know that's what we uh, have as a philosophy of our project it's the forbidden force it's like when any payment goes into nobody else will know anything about the payment but the receiver will receive the payment itself extremely fast. Mm -hmm. Now, Litex is a company focusing on their two uh, protocols or tech technology itself. So now, would you care to elaborate further on what Litex does? At first, we developed the layer two technology based on Bitcoin, and uh, we launched our testnet in last year, October the 24th, and uh, achieved uh, several uh, technical breakthroughs like uh, Lightning Network, uh, uh, channel expansion and uh, partial withdrawals, uh, atomic swaps between uh, uh, BTC and ERC20 tokens uh, to start, uh, and uh, distributed fast routing. And after that, uh, we built our layer 2 based on Ethereum, and uh, we launched our uh, uh, commercial scale layer 2 uh, product demo uh, in December the 1st last year. And uh, uh, recently, we are going to launch our uh, official uh, commercial scale open source layer two, uh, layer two product. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, we'll uh, do a lot of things in crypto payment. Now, you mentioned a little bit about the field that your interest, Litex is interested in. Now, layer two technology is vastly applicable. You can implement layer two technology for various reasons. You can use it for payment, you can use it for transaction, you can use it for contracts. So which field is Litex currently looking into? Are you what are what field are you guys interested in currently? Uh, the field we are interested in are mostly uh, dev games uh, because we saw the prosper of uh, EOS dev ecology uh, from last October. Uh, actually, that's why we begin to build uh, layer two based on Ethereum uh, because we can see a, a daily inflow of over a million dollars. Uh, so that's quite. Uh, uh, I think that says uh, that says. Uh, something uh, it it, uh, it proves that uh, that games is a uh, applicable scenario for layer two technology, and uh, we think that with layer two technology we can make the uh, Ethereum dev ecology uh, prosper and uh, even better than EOS uh, eco dev ecosystem. Uh, yeah. So, Costa, what's your take on blockchain games? Do you like them? You don't like them? What do you think is left for blockchain games to be, you know, fun or available to the public? Uh, to be honest, it's uh, 
it's better to have uh, games on the blockchain is because it's like a decentralized right, and more right. trustable. Let's say if you play a casino and if a casino belongs to a single person, you never know what's your like uh, success rate is going to be there. But when game when the game is on the blockchain, everybody do understand the code and can go deeply if they're like tech savvy and do have some knowledge about it and to confirm that you have real success to win. Right. Now, one interesting uh, factor about Forest is its consensus algorithm. Now, Forest uses a DAG consensus algorithm. Now, currently there is POS, POW, DPOS, and DAOs. There's a lot coming out, but then what's different? What is DAG and what's different about DAG? We employed and implemented the, the DEG it's because uh, we can to a high efficiency. Let's say if you would like to purchase a cup of coffee, will you wait for 10 minutes so when your payment will be processed? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think no, so. I actually tried that at a coffee shop. Yeah, and, and what happened? I Nothing took happened. 15 minutes or something yeah, to, to, get the to, to get your cold hot coffee, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's why probably you should choose like iced coffee, you know, right, just indeed. to wait until your payment will be processed. That's why we decided to go with the DG technology it's because it's like an internal accounting and it provides us an opportunity even with Mimble Wimble to get up to 10,000 transactions per second at our blockchain at the forest blockchain that's why now speed is very important when it comes and to efficiency scale. yes yes so efficiency and speed is is critical when yes. it comes to the scalability of blockchain, right? Which is for the retail payments, for <laughs> daily payments, for right, your right. for your gas station, for your car wash, for your lunch, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. We have to have a very fast speed payments. Mm -hmm. Now, other than the DAG consensus algorithm, what has Forest done to implement to improve its efficiency? Yes, and not only efficiency, because the Forest blockchain is the first project project over ever which implemented two different technologies. First one is Mimble Wimble and DAG technologies and we are the first who combined these two because a standard and very ordinary Mimble Wimble protocol it puts up to 20 different transactions but with a combination of the DAG we are able to take over 10,000 transactions per second it's in 2.5 times more than any peak time on the world now. Now I have to ask you what is Mimble Wimble protocol? The name is funny, but then it must be something that boosts the speed and the efficiency. Now, what does this do? It's not. It's not. Uh -huh. Mimble Wimble, it's not about efficiency or speed okay. at all. Mimble Wimble is <laughs> about security and privacy of your payments. Right, right. Let's say if you do use your bitcoins, probably you have your mobile wallet application and nobody knows what do this application collect from you? Maybe your Google account, maybe your location, maybe your real name, surname. It's we wouldn't call actual coins um, secured and uh, anonymous enough. Mm. That's why we employed Mimble Wimble is because it provides uh, to our customers and users uh, and like a high level of privacy. Let's right. say if you pay for a cup of coffee, I wouldn't say you would like to know to everybody know what have you purchased. Or let's say if you go to purchase something for your girlfriend, etc., etc. It's kind of we keen to keep a high level of privacy for our users. That's why we implemented Mimble Wimble protocol. Mm -hmm. Now switching gears to you, Laura. Litex is interested in blockchain-based games. Now, however, blockchain-based games is yet to achieve mass adoption. The public is yet to put their eyes on this. So what do you think is left for the blockchain-based game developers to do to achieve mass adoption? I think there is a lot for the developers to do. Uh, 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 basically, spe uh, basically speaking, uh, blockchain technology has not been uh, adopted uh, massively by uh, by common users, right. uh, and uh, the game experience is not good enough and not fun enough. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, for the developers, there are a lot of challenges. Like uh, he uh, he has to be familiar with the token economy. And he has to uh, be familiar with uh, uh, 
uh, with uh, uh, the secondary market right, right. Or, or token market mm -hmm. and he has to be able to design uh, uh, a game that is uh, fine enough. So they're just given more work, right? Yeah, I think it's uh, even more complicated than uh, the regional mobile games. Oh, uh, besides, they need to be uh, familiar with uh, the community right, culture. Right, right. Community that, is a big thing, like yeah, the that, that, that's, that's, that's quite different from original games. Mm -hmm. Now, this question is for both of you guys. You are here in Korea now. So, what brought you to Korea? What are you guys looking for here? Uh, start with you, Costa. Korea, from our point of view, Korea always was on a on a very emerging edge, mm -hmm. and uh, let's say uh, Singapore, Korea, Japan. Uh, I was hugely surprised when I knew that in Japan, when you pay in Ethereum to your suppliers, some to service suppliers, it happened maybe a year or two, even two years ago, mm -hmm. they add some. Uh, VAT to their invoice when you pay oh. in crypto okay. <laughs> and they pay taxes when they receive payments in cryptocurrencies. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> I wouldn't say anything on it, but <laughs> yeah, but it was it surprised me massively. But uh, here in Korea, we witnessed that it's a very vibrant region for. Uh, for the very first adoption and it's uh, it's a very vibrant market uh, because of payments because uh, I do believe and I do witness that Korea it's like a country that got built to like pure payments right, right. very fast efficient payments and even I tried to pay to a cafe for a coffee and it's hugely efficient and even uh, some people in Africa because I travel to Africa often to sub-Saharan Africa <laughs> Uh, some local banks just copy pasted Korean and Chinese technologies. That's okay. why we expect to meet many followers, contributors, su supporters who would like to be a part of the forest project and who would like to join us because you guys, it's a very brave nation to, to, <laughs> to be <you>. with. <laughs> now, as for you, Laura, what are you looking for here in Korea? Uh, actually, uh, we are looking for uh, a lot of uh, cooperations here and we value the Korean market very much. So you guys must have traveled around the world and visited blockchain industries around the world. So from your own perspective, what do you, which country do you think is on the forefront when it comes to developing blockchain or pushing the industry of blockchain further? Uh, sorry, you Costa? Yeah, uh, you're definitely right. Uh, I do travel pretty often <laughs> and uh, I have, I have uh, like, do you know how uh, pilots count their experience right. by like hours in, in the sky? Mm -hmm. That's why I could compete to them because I have <laughs> maybe much more hours than they do. Uh -huh. And yes, I definitely visit different countries like Singapore, Korea, China, Japan, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. uh, even uh, I've got some experience with Estonian electronic residency mm -hmm. to become like an e-resident e of Estonia and you'll right. be able to launch your startup there and it's possible to obtain an e-money license there and yeah but uh, I would say uh, I would like to emphasize three major countries first right. one is Singapore mm -hmm. second one is Korea and the third one is Switzerland mm -hmm. these three countries uh, aren't only like early stage adopters <laughs> right, right. but they do implement and employ the blockchain technologies as first countries and let's say uh, Switzerland they do launch some STOs and it's possible to register your legal entity in Switzerland and to run your STO campaign it's legally there and it's like it's a piece of beauty and safety for your business. Right, right. As for you, Laura, which, which country do you think is on the forefront of developing the blockchain industry? Uh, I think uh, my answer uh, should be uh, Singapore and uh, uh, Korea. Well, uh, Singapore is a quite efficient country that connects all the major cities around the world and is financially uh, free uh, and uh, it has more, uh, it's more suitable for startups. Uh, uh, especially for blockchain startups. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the reason I love Singapore. And uh, I think uh, Korea is awesome too. 
because the uh, high quality of projects, uh, 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 awesome medias, and uh, uh, the the relatively uh, friendly regulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Mr. Du, Miss Lee, that is all the questions we have today. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Costa Du, the core contributor of Forest, and Miss Laura Lee, the CMO of Litex. Thank you for watching.